Good afternoon, Eastern North Carolina, and thank you for joining our WNCT Now Early Afternoon News Update. I'm Kelsey O'Donnell, broadcasting to you live today from inside the digital studio with some of today's top news headlines. We are continuing to track the coronavirus across the state of North Carolina. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the updated numbers for today. More than 5,500 cases are reported today following a record-setting Wednesday case count. Right now, there are more than 416,000 cases. Over 2,400 people are currently in the hospital and 5,700 people in our state have succumbed to the virus. North Carolina health officials say hospitals are feeling the strains of increased COVID cases, but they're soon getting help through new safe COVID vaccines. Health Secretary Mandy Cohen says the state should start getting its initial shipments of the Pfizer COVID vaccine in the next few days. Dr. Cohen says North Carolina is getting a limited supply with people at high risk of the virus prioritized for the first round of shots. That includes frontline health care workers and residents of long care health facilities. She also wants people to know that the vaccine is safe. More than 70,000 people participated in clinical trials for both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines to see if they were safe and effective. And preliminary data shows that they are nearly 95% effective in preventing COVID-19 with minimal safety concerns. There is no COVID-19 virus in the actual vaccine themselves. Again, that was Dr. Mandy Cohen, and she says the vaccine will be free to everyone, whether or not they have insurance coverage. Meanwhile, a new poll from Elon University finds many North Carolinians are wary about taking the COVID vaccine. The survey suggests about 40% of people across the state would take a vaccine approved by the FDA. A nearly equal number says it depends, with the remaining 20% saying they would not take the COVID shots. Concerns include the speed of the vaccine development, a lack of trust in the FDA, and potential side effects. Responders also say the vaccine would infringe on individual rights, the same way that government mask mandates and lockdowns. Turning now to weather, we've had some chilly days and we've had some mild days. So our first alert meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko, joins us with what you can expect for weather patterns up ahead. Alex. Happy little Friday, everybody. I'm your first alert meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko, reporting from the WNCT studios and the first alert weather center on what has been a much warmer day than the last couple of days already. And we're just about to reach your afternoon and evening hours. You'll notice as we go through the rest of your Thursday forecast, nothing but sunshine, a few fair weather clouds, light winds, and those warming temperatures back into the upper 50s and low 60s today. As we move into the overnight period through early Friday morning, skies will remain clear, at least initially. But by the time we wake up on Friday morning, we'll start to see clouds advancing from south to north across the east. It's all due in part to a trough of low pressure that will reside offshore on Friday. But as it begins to work onshore, we'll also see some lighter variety showers and a few stray sprinkles inland and even along the coast. However, we are hoping that the clouds hold off for just a little bit past midnight tonight. We do have the opportunity to experience the northern lights tonight as a huge geomagnetic storm gets fired up in outer space. In fact, such a strong geomagnetic storm that space forecasters across the United States have issued a geomagnetic storm watch for tonight. The northern lights likely going to be visible if there aren't any clouds through the northern plains and upper Midwest. However, that blue line, that resembles where you'll be able to see the northern lights very low on the horizon. Keep in mind, though, this is a highly variable forecast likely to change every half hour or so. So do your best to keep up to date on this space weather forecast if you are interested in seeing this maybe once in a lifetime opportunity. As you take you through the next several days, you'll be wanting to have that first alert weather app downloaded and ready to go because there are going to be many changes to talk about heading into the weekend. First and foremost, a warm-up back to near 70 degrees for the end of the weekend, but with that warm-up for inland and coastal communities will also come some isolated showers Friday, Saturday, even into Sunday. However, as that trough of low pressure through the weekend consolidates its energy with an incoming cold front, scattered showers will become more likely by Monday. In the wake of that cold front, though, and you can tell it's a cold front, we will cool on down. We go from the 60s and 70s Sunday and Monday back down into the 50s by next Tuesday. Make it a happy little Friday, everybody. Be well and stay healthy this holiday season. I'm your first alert meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko. 
All right, warm weather and the northern lights. I'll take it. Thank you, Alex. Turning now to our crime tracker, police are releasing the name of a victim involved in a death investigation in Greenville. On Wednesday, they found the body of 70-year-old Annie Miller inside a home on Ridge Place, just off Hooker Road. Police were at the home to do a welfare check when detectives are now waiting on autopsy results to determine how she died. Anyone with information is asked to call the Greenville Police Department or Crime Stoppers. That will do it for our WNCT Now Early Afternoon News Update. Be sure to stick around for our 4 p.m. update with more of today's top news headlines. Thanks for watching.